In this video, we'll talk about the differences between Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. And we would try to understand the overall pathological basis of these two diseases. Both of them are actually inflammatory bowel disease and it's an umbrella term used to describe disorders in the uh, gut which involves chronic inflammation. Basically, IBD could be life-threatening as well. What are the symptoms of IBD? Generally, IBD is associated with persistent diarrhea, rectal bleeding, weight loss, abdominal pain, fatigue, etc. Now, when it comes to Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, there is a big difference at a macroscopic level. In Crohn's disease, uh, any part in the GI tract could be affected. But most commonly, some portions of the intestine and some portions of the large intestine or the colon is affected. In case of ulcerative colitis, the rectum and the sigmoid colon is mostly affected. The inflamed tissue in Crohn's disease shows a patchy appearance. That means there are inflamed tissue flanked by normal tissue. So there is a salt and paper appearance of inflamed and non-inflamed tissue. In case of ulcerative colitis, there is a continuity in terms of the inflamed tissue. Now we would compare these in various contexts. Let's talk about location. We already discussed that Crohn's disease generally affects portions of small intestine especially ileum and the ascending colon and then commonly uh, rectum and sigmoid colon is affected in ulcerative colitis it has to be remembered that the rectum is spared in case of Crohn's disease but it is affected in case of ulcerative colitis now let's talk about the extent Crohn's disease affects the entire thickness of the gut wall so here is a portion of the colon where we can see the lumen of the colon and in case of Crohn's disease we can see the thickening of the colon wall there is cobblestone like appearance and there is fistula now these fistula are deep wounds actually now in case of ulcerative colitis there is a superficial uh, damage or superficial inflammation that means the mucus layer is mostly inflamed and sored now the Classical definition of ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease doesn't hold true based on the based on uh, the latest research. There are many subdivisions among them also, and we are not going to talk about them. Let's spare that and talk about them in a broader context. So let's talk about fibrosis, pseudopolyp development, and dysplasia. Fibrosis is quite common in case of Crohn's disease but not that common in case of ulcerative colitis. It's rarely seen. Pseudopolyps are rare in case of Crohn's disease, whereas quite common in ulcerative colitis. Dysplasia can be seen in Crohn's disease, but not that much in case of uh, ulcerative colitis. It's important to know that pseudopolyps are very common in ulcerative colitis. Now, there are specific pathological anatomical hallmarks of Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. So, in Crohn's disease, there is non-caseting uh, granuloma formation and also there is that cobblestone-like appearance which is found in all the uh, endoscopic images. And in case of ulcerative colitis, one can see crypt abscess and this is more common in case of ulcerative colitis compared to Crohn's disease but it can be seen in both these cases. When it comes to the depth of inflammation it is transmural it spans the entire part of the GI wall whereas it's more superficial towards the mucosal or to some extent submucosal level. Type of inflammation uh, non cassetting granulomas are formed generally mononuclear infiltration happens in this case. Crypt abscess are quite common in ulcerative colitis that we already talked about and there could be uh, infiltration of several different inflammatory cells. When it comes to mucosal damage, the ulceration is quite patchy in case of Crohn's disease. Whereas the ulceration is hemorrhagic in nature in case of ulcerative colitis and it's kind of uh, continuous and spans all over the mucosa. The submucosa is widened in case of Crohn's disease and it is due to edema and lymphoid aggregates. 
Whereas the submucosa is overall normal in ulcerative colitis because only mucosa is affected, but sometimes it's also reduced in width. So I hope this was good enough. But before we end, we should also understand the immunological differences. Now, a general theme about immunological differences underlying uh, IBD is basically there are more pro-inflammatory T cells inv involvement compared to anti-inflammatory ones. So overall, pro-inflammatory cytokines are predominant. That causes the problem. Um, there are few more aspects we should understand. One is fistula formation. That could be internal or external in case of Crohn's disease. And it's extremely rare in case of ulcerative colitis. Malignant cases are very less in case of Crohn's disease, whereas prolonged ulcerative colitis can lead to colorectal cancers eventually. What are the fibrous, uh, what are the presence of fibrous stricture? Fibrous stricture is more common in case of Crohn's disease and it's, uh, it, it lead to bowel obstruction, whereas it never forms in case of ulcerative colitis. So that kind of summarizes the differences between these two diseases. I think it is good and informative enough. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in next video.